Oh, howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Excel discussion. Today, what I want to talk about is the patch notes for 3.10. And rather than go through every single line uh, in one video, which would go for several hours, I'm going to go through just a few of the things that I think are major highlights, things that will really change the game a lot. And as someone with a bit of an endgame crafting focus, uh, I think that the biggest thing has been the changes to fossil crafting and to influence ice item modifiers. So if you have a quick look over on Path of Exile subreddit, there's a whole lot of people saying that the sky is falling with the changes to fossil crafting. And it seemed like it's one of the biggest questions today. Is fossil crafting dead? Well, I think the answer is no. Fossil crafting is going to be less broken than it was in 3.9. Uh, but there is still going to be a lot of very powerful things that you can do with it. So let's have a quick look at the changes. Firstly, this is tied in with the changes to influenced item modifiers, and you'll see the way that that's being done. Essentially, at its core of the changes, all of the fossil exclusive mods, with the exception of bloodstained, hollow, and faceted fossils, all of them are going kaput. They are being moved to other sources. So they're going to be able to be obtained through other methods, uh, but they're not going to be able to be obtained through the current method of fossil exclusive mods. So to give a bit of an example of this, uh, let's take, say, for claws. One of the most popular mods to craft onto a claw using fossils is 60% chance for poisons inflicted with this weapon to deal 100% more damage. Currently, the only way to get this is to roll a claw using a corroded fossil. So, the current uh, way that you would do this, you would find a Gemini claw while you're mapping. You would then grab, go into the delve mines and pick up a few corroded fossils. And then you would just apply corroded fossil after corroded fossil, possibly in conjunction with other fossils as well, until you got a claw that you are happy with. Now, the entire flow of this is changing. Uh, for crafting mid-tier gear, so this is gear that is considerably better than Wasp's, wasp's Nest, uh, as far as claws go, but gear that is nowhere near Meritier, uh, it's my ex expectation that in, under the old system, you would have used about 50 corroded fossils and just one normal base. Then once you got something that was really good, if it had four mods on it, you would then benchcraft a fifth mod and then use a Conqueror's Exalted Orb to try and hit an amazing sixth mod on it. If the item had five mods on it when you rolled it, you would then just apply a bench crafted mod to make it even better. So, the new flow is going to be very different. Uh, this is not going to be linked to corroded fossils anymore, except that corroded fossils will still, because it's a poison themed mod, corroded fossils will still make you 10 times as likely to roll it. Instead of being delve exclusive, that mod will be elder item exclusive. So this is going to be a total transformation of how you're going to go about crafting that. So to get that same Gemini Claw under the new system, instead of picking up a just a cheap Gemini Claw base from a map and maybe 50 Corroded Fossils that early in a league might be uh, 15 Chaos Orbs each, what you'll do is you'll, you'll be buying an expensive Elder-influenced Gemini Claw to start with. Uh, let's say this might cost you 200 Chaos. Then you're going to be crafting that with any crafting method you desire and you'll be able to get your Corroded Fossil exclusive mod coming up in the Elder mod pool instead. So let's go through everything that is now available and what's sort of changing. So firstly, there's going to be new mods available on Hunter Influence and Warlord Influence Gloves. We've got no info on what these are. Uh, additional tiers of maximum resistance modifiers in various places. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of these mods. Uh, I think that it's lower opportunity cost to get them on the passive tree. Uh, however, you can certainly make some very powerful builds by stacking as many different sources of uh, maximum resistance modifier as possible. Uh, I just think that since the changes to uh, cap resistances completely at 90% a few leagues ago, there's no longer quite as much power in these mods as there used to be. Uh, Conqueror's Exalted Orbs will now obey the mod restrictions on uh, Daggers and Warstaves, that's, that's good. Shaper-influenced helmets can now gain nearby enemies take increased elemental damage. Gotta see numbers on this. This could be really, really strong, uh, but we need to see numbers. Elder-influenced quivers can no longer gain chance to gain a frenzy charge on kill. I'm not sure if that exists anywhere else. Uh, I think there's something related to it in the uh, Veiled Item system. 
Warlord influence belts can now gain increased damage at values higher than those found on veiled items, slightly higher, so 20% on veiled items, maybe you can get 22% flat damage, universal damage on Warlord influence belts. Uh, Shaper influence belts can no longer gain increased energy shield. Uh, this sounds like a terrible nerf, however, the Crusader influence belts were already better than the Shaper influence ones there, so that's not really any significant loss. At least not at the top end of progression. It might be it might be something that slows you down a bit while you're trying to compile a great gear set, but once you've got a whole bunch of, of powerful items, you're going to want a Crusader aligned belt instead of a Shaper one anyway. Uh, now, increased fire, cold, and lightning damage modifiers on belts from the Warlord, Redeemer, and Crusader influence belts can now roll 5% higher than previously. Existing items can be defined. Now, this replaces the Delve exclusive belt mods that existed there. So, the Delve exclusive mods, for instance, the Redeemer Cold one, uh, Redeemer Cold mod is just going to replace the Delve Frigid Fossil exclusive mod. So this is a change of where the mods are available. Hunter influenced amulets can now gain chaos damage leached as life. Got to say numbers on that. Now, fossil crafting. Firstly, the description of what they're doing here is interesting. I think it's a little bit uh, a little bit unclear what their motivation was. Fundamentally, the design for the design intention I think of these changes is to make it so that sources of loot that are not fossil crafting can compete with fossil crafting. So this is a considerable nerf to the power of fossil crafted items, uh, which then brings them more in line with what you can get through other types of crafting, such as alteration regal crafting, uh, chaos orb spamming, and the like. So uh, basically, as I was saying before, we've done away with all fossil exclusive mods except faceted bloodstained and hollow fossils, and moved a number of them to other sources. So, fossils can no longer craft any prefix or suffix mods that cannot be obtained elsewhere, with the exception of the first three that we discussed. Implicit mods remain. The following mods have been relocated, while all others can no longer be obtained. On boots, plus two to the level of socketed gems of a particular type. This is an interesting one. I like this mod. I really do like this mod, but most people regard it as, a, as just a junk mod. And what this is going to mean is that these boot mods are going to dilute the pool of mods, unless you're playing a build that can actually benefit from these, from these effects. Uh, and that'll be things like uh, four linked Herald of Ice setups. Uh, maybe a couple of specific Spellslinger setups might want this. But otherwise, this is going to be a pretty undesirable mod. And so that's going to mean it's going to be harder to roll a fantastic Redeemer set of boots because now you have plus two to the level of socketed cold gems appearing as an additional undesired mod in amongst the pool. However, uh, I don't think this is going to be particularly transformative of crafting. Uh, what is changing though is that you can't lock in one of these on an already grade item and then once you've got a grade item then hit it with a conqueror exalt to add something else. So something that I did as a little bit of an experiment in the Metamorph League was I picked up a set of item level 86 two-tone boots that had no influence on them. I then rolled them using uh, frigid fossils until I got both the plus two to the level of socketed cold gems and also 35% movement speed on the same set of boots. Uh, once I had that, I then smashed it with a, I think it was a uh, Redeemer's Exalted Orb that I ended up using on them, but it was one of the Conqueror Exalts. And the idea there is that you can lock in two really good mods, uh, the 35% move speed and the plus two to the level of socketed gems, and then use the Conqueror's Exalt to add another really good mod. It's no longer going to be as easy to get that three great mods set up as it was in 3.9. Uh, now this is okay for boots because this is a bit of a niche mod. This is not something that most people want. A plus one to global level of raised spectres as well is a very powerful mod that was bound fossil exclusive. Uh, it's now moving to Elder Influence. I actually think that's going to make Elder Influence boots considerably better than they have been. Uh, Spectres are getting nerfed a bit, but that's still going to be a hotly desired, uh, hotly desired mod for a certain type of build. And it'll probably actually be easier to roll now than it was in the past. Next up, the various uh, negative re resistances to nearby enemies are going to be changed to various influences. And importantly, increased effect of Fortify. 
uh, which is one of the most powerful mods around on helmets. That's now being moved to Crusader Influence. So, what does this mean for builds that are looking to get both nearby enemies take additional damage uh, for or have reduced nearby enemies take additional damage and also increase effect of fortify? It means that you're going to be able to guarantee hitting that with an Awakener's Orb. So, let's say that you want nearby enemies take a 9% increase physical damage and increase effect of fortify. In the old system, the way that you would get both of these together would be by rolling your helmet using, uh, you would need to be using a dense fossil in order to get the fortify mod, and you would need to be using a jagged fossil in order to get this uh, physical damage mod. Use the, using the dense fossil also precluded you from normally rolling life on the, on the helmet. Uh, once you've made that roll, then you had a, a modest chance of getting both of the mods you desired. Now what you're going to need to do is grab yourself a Crusader-influenced helmet and roll it to get Fortify on it first. Uh, then you're going to need to get an Elder-influenced helmet, roll it to get the 9% uh, increased physical damage for nearby enemies. You might use fossils for that, you might just use Chaos Orbs or uh, some other form of crafting. And then you're going to smash them together using an Awakener's Orb. This is going to result in it being more deterministic to get these items, but also harder to get extraordinarily good ones. All you need to do in a trade league is just pick up an Awakener's Orb, and you can pretty much guarantee your choice of the right two mods together. But of course, it's going to come at a difficult. It's going to have the uh, cost of getting an Awakener's Orb. Now. Body armor, socketed attacks have 15%, oh, sorry, have flat negative 15 to mana cost. This now comes from Warlord's influence. This is still available and this is going to be huge because for the first time this can be combined with other, uh, with other sorts of mods that you couldn't previously combine it with. Uh, the reason for that is that you can get, you can guarantee that you've got the Warlord's influence mod uh, and then use an Awakener's Orb to, for instance, put this on the same item as the Crusader Exploding Chest. I'm sure there's probably one or two of these that exist in the, uh, in the current league, uh, items that have the Crusader Exploding mod and also minus 15 to the cost of a socketed attacks, but there'd be very few of them. Now they're going to be able to be semi-deterministically -determin crafted. This is going to be a huge buff for crafting body armor for certain builds. Of course, that gives you four random mods. One of them is going to be the previously serrated fossil mod. Uh, one of them is going to be the previously, sorry, one of them is going to be the Crusader influence mod. Uh, and then the other two or three or four random mods on it could all be garbage, but you've got a chance to get something amazing and it should be easier than it has been in the past. Uh, also importantly, there is this X percent increased effect of aura, uh, increased aura effect on you from Redeemer's influence. This is such a powerful mod that has flown under the radar for a long time, and now again you'll be able to get it in conjunction with the Crusader Exploding mod. And more than that, here's how you're going to craft this: you can make a Val Regalia that has the Crusader Exploding mod and also has increased effect of auras on you, so that you can then stack that in conjunction with uh, absurd things like discipline uh, and you know get more benefit out of discipline the way that you would do this is you would find a high item level val regalia and you would then hit it with a redeemer's exalted orb or you could just trade for a redeemer uh, a redeemer val regalia already uh, you'll roll that until you get increased aura effect on you on it as your only redeemer mod then you'll pick up a chess piece that already has the crusader exploding mod on it that mod is really rare, so that might cost quite a bit. Uh, and then you'll use an Awakener's Orb, sacrificing the Crusader item, which doesn't need to be a Val Regalia. It can be, you know, a totally terrible base, something that no one really wants. Uh, sacrifice the Val Regalia to empower the... Sorry, sacrifice the non-Val Regalia, the Crusader one, to empower the Redeemer item and get the two mods together that were very, very, very hard to get together in the past. Okay, so Quivers have um, seen the percentage chance to gain a Frenzy Charge on hitting a rare or unique, moved to Elder Influence. Uh, belts, various increased damage mods have all been shuffled off to Influences, and increased energy shield from body armor is still available, and is now a Shaper 
prefix. This is interesting. This can now be mashed in with the so this can now be mashed in with Crusader percentage increased uh, energy shield. You can now pretty deterministically craft a belt that has this as a shaper mod, so percentage increased uh, energy shield from body armor, and has the shaper sorry it has a Crusader percentage increased energy shield on a crystal belt, and then you can bench craft uh, flat energy shield on top of that. So that's going to be a really powerful craft, but it also is going to be a very defensive item. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to get those mods in conjunction with offensive mods as well. Still, I think it's going to be really good. Uh, rings. The various leech modifiers are going semi-legacy. They're still going to be available, but only from delve encounters. Uh, I don't think anyone's really going to miss them all that much. Uh, I didn't think that much of them. Weapons. Socketed attacks and spells deal X percent more damage is now found with Shaper Influence. Again, this is going to be huge. This can be combined with Awaken Absorbs with all sorts of silly things. Uh, this is going to be a really powerful deterministic form of crafting that's being introduced. So fossils are losing this power and the Awaken Absorb is gaining it, but I think it's going to be pretty solid overall on balance. Chance for Poison and Bleeding to deal, uh, to deal double damage is now coming from Elder Influence. Uh, and that's, of course, the most powerful of these mods. This is an interesting one in that it is essential for uh, Poison and Bleed builds to function, that they get this mod. So it's going to be very important early in the league. And then later in the league, everyone's going to have it because it's not that rare. Or at least it hasn't been. Uh, Auras from your skills grant increased damage to you and your allies is now with the Redeemer influence. Uh, Jewels. Damage penetrates 1% uh, to, of resistances is going to Corrupted Implicits. This was always a pretty bad mod. And actually, I'm really excited about the potential now to use fossils to bias the rolls on jewels. In the past, there's been a real weakness with fossil crafting and jewels. And what that's been is that all of the Delve exclusive, sorry, all of the fossil exclusive jewel mods, with the exception of the, of the Aberrant Fossil, have been very, very weak. Let's bring up the list of mods available for Crimson Jewel. So we have, these are the Delve exclusive muscles, uh, Delve exclusive modifiers. Damage penetrates 1% of various elemental resistances. Our 4 to 6% increased global defenses was strong. That was an exception. Damage penetrates 1% of resistances. Tiny amount of life regen per second. Tiny amount of reduced physical damage over time. Uh, this was a genuinely good mod, 13 to 19% increased chaos damage because it's stacked with the prefix that did the same thing. Uh, various armor and evasion, if you've hit an enemy recently, uh, okay, increased damage with ailments, it was good, but it wasn't, it wasn't fantastic, but everything else is pretty much trash on these. Uh, so, what's happening now is that you're going to be able to use Delve Fossils to bias towards getting desired rolls. And the most important role on jewels is either life or energy shield, depending upon uh, the type of jewel you're trying to roll. So if you're trying to roll a life jewel, uh, you'll be able to just whack a pristine fossil in there and no longer have to deal with having this as a very common undesirable roll. So this had a weighting of 10,000, which meant that it came up uh, pretty much all the time. Whereas the roll you actually care about, Vivid, had only a weighting of 5,000. This meant that you were twice as likely to get this, uh, this disappointing roll as you were to get the good one. Now, you'll still have the uh, 5,000 weighted uh, Vivid roll, but the only undesirable rolls will be Hungering and Totem Life and Life Gain on Hit. So there'll be fewer of them, basically fewer turds in the drop pool. Less turds in the drop pool is a good thing. And essentially, Pristine Fossils will give, in my estimate, about about 70-80% better results on jewels than they used to. Uh, however, it's even more striking when you use prismatic fossils because prismatic fossils make a lot of good additional rolls available on jewels. Uh, lastly, glove, amulet and shield fossil exclusive modifiers are gone. Legacy. The glove mods are absolutely busted at low level and they're gone. The amulet mods, uh, this does include, I think there's a fortify mod, oh no, that's a, uh, that is a corrupted essence exclusive, and shields, I never really did any fossil crafting on shields, I'm sure there were some uses for them, but generally speaking, I don't think much is being lost there. 
So let's have a quick summary here of the changes. Firstly, fossils are being nerfed. They're going from overpowered beyond belief to still very solid. And the Awakener's Orb is gaining a lot of new potential uses. So expect Awakener's, Orb, uh, Awakener's Orbs to be really hot in demand early on. Uh, there's also a few of the best tricks for using Conqueror's Exalted Orbs early in a league are gone now. Uh, but I do think that Conqueror's Exalted Orbs will still be very good. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Comments, questions, fire away below. Otherwise, I hope you have a good one.